taken off. According to Sebastian, it's 69 degrees out here at 6.54 a.m. Do have some daylight breaking the horizon. We're headed out of, we're on the road now that our housing's on, so pretty soon we'll be turning onto the park road. So what is it, Dad, about three hours to Key West from our house in Flamingo? Well, it depends on time of season. Yeah, that's true. So it could be busy or on weekends any time of year. It could be especially busy during what we call our peak season, which is basically January through to the like mid-April. Um, so those things have to be right. in consideration. Probably three hours from Homestead. Oh, three hours from Homestead. I thought it was like two from Homestead. No. no. Oh, I apologize. Our window's a little foggy because the air conditioning's on. And then it is obviously humid out. Plus, yeah, window's probably dirty. So I always add this in just for the like geekiness that the county we're in here in Flamingo is Monroe County, which covers the Keys, this part of Everglades, and then stretches a little tiny bit up into just part of the loop road up in Big Cypress, which if you saw our Big Cypress set of videos when we did the loop road tour, we mentioned that we were in Monroe County again. So um, when we read like weather apps and stuff, it actually reads out of Ala Mirada on the Keys. So that's where we get our weather from. So it's not always the same as what's happening on the Keys, but the Keys are closer to us here in Flamingo if you were a bird or a boat. But to drive to the Keys, we have to drive, you know, out of the park, out into Homestead, well, actually Florida City, then cut down onto the Keys. So that's what takes the majority of the time is we have an hour just to get out of the park. Yeah, 40 minutes. Yeah, 40 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic and time of day. One of the things we were excited about this morning is everybody was up early, excited. Teddy was up at 4.30 to get into his Easter basket. So we're like, hey, we might as well take a ride to Key West because a lot of times when we have family day, we're going too late to want to consider this drive because you really do kind of want to get a jump on traffic. And you need to consider that if you're coming back the same day because it is just one road down, one road back. Um, and it can, especially if there's construction or accidents, Route 1 between Florida City and Key West can have major, I mean like hour long or more backups. Um, so do be prepared, you know, and if you think there's a snag, check your, you know, whatever drive app you use, Google Maps or whatever, to see if there's any snags. And, you know, sometimes if you know there's a snag, it's a good thing to just pull off and have an extra snack or something for a while instead of sitting in the traffic. But anyway, enough chit-chatting. Let's, uh, I probably won't film much until we get out and headed down through. And I probably will save a lot of my filming for after Ala Mirada, because we did just recently, a few weeks ago, do a bit of a video down to the Bass Pro and Ala Mirada and back. What did the Easter Bunny bring you? It's a little handheld gaming device. It uh, has like 201 games on it. Very old school games like Mommy and Daddy used to play when they were kids, huh? And just a little something extra to keep in the car to help entertain you, huh? Did you want to say anything else? This will give you a negative to wear and wear our bags. That's right. And Lucy's back there somewhere. She's already laying on Raphael. I can't quite see her. So. That's why you can't on the camera that way. I know we can see you, but we can't fit all four of us in one shot, no matter what we do, especially since Lucy blends in with the seat cover. So <laughs> that's what you get. But sun's coming up and it's, oh, it temperature's dropped a little bit. What did I say it was when we left Flamingo? I don't know. It's 64 currently. It does that. When sun comes up, it like dips and then starts going back up. Decided to hit up racetrack this morning for gas. It was 3.49 a gallon. Ugh. Not happy with that, but it is what it is. What do you do? Move what do you to Texas. <laughs> yeah. It's all cheaper. <laughs> So Mark grabbed some breakfast sandwiches, sausage, egg and cheese on biscuits, I think. Something I can't eat, so it smells good though. That's good. Uh, I got my typical go-to at racetrack is this 
little nut mix. And I got my other go-to, because there's still like two for three bucks, is my coconut lime vitamin water. Lucy, as you can see, is getting treats egg. from Daddy. <laughs> she likes the egg. I bet she does like the egg. She has, oh, no sausage? I'm surprised. I didn't give her oh. sausage, I just gave her egg. Uh, Teddy has a go-go squeeze that I bought in there that he's enjoying. Oh, go-go go squeeze. cheese on it, so. Oh, that's right. And I do have a package of bugles for Teddy because Teddy was actually fell asleep when we pulled in and he didn't wake up through me pumping gas and all that. So I wasn't sure if Teddy was going to get up. So I grabbed things that I thought would last for the ride. I'm sure we'll get plenty of snacks as the day goes on too. So, all right. Timestamp is 8.04. We have a full tank of gas. It doesn't say the temperature. The car's not reading the temperature. It's probably into the low 70s now, I'm guessing, aren't you? Just must Six. not be. Oh, 64 it says, but I don't believe that. That's what it was when we still were reading from Everglades. I'd say it's more like 68 now. Huh, it's still sticking with that 64. I thought it felt gorgeous in the parking lot. Oh, well, now southbound on one. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm probably not going to film a lot between here and Alamo. with the window down but I wanted to try to get a little shot of Robbie's we're not gonna stop today but this is quite the roadside attraction here on the drive down to Key West a lot of people like stopping at Robbie's trying to feed the fish big rush of coming down. Usually we see a lot of people, the height of it, leaving Florida City at like 11 a.m. Trying to get you some guys some more water view. It's hard because then you come through spells like this where there's bushes, so. It's beautiful. It's still only 76 degrees. I've lost track of what key we're on. Oh, here's the marathon sign, this right? grassy key. Here we are, welcome to marathon. So like, there's a whole bunch of like organized towns. Sea grapes coming back. Oh yeah, the sea grapes are coming back. So there's a lot of little keys within like a town. Like Alamorada, you go 
go across a lot of bridges, but it's still Ala Morada. There's a whole bunch of little keys that are within Ala Morada, and Marathon's the same way. It's nice to see Marathon again. I like Marathon a lot, too. I like Ala Morada a lot. I like Marathon a lot. stopping here in Marathon for a potty break and you know they say on the keys it's five o'clock somewhere but our boys think it's ice cream o'clock somewhere still in the morning but it's Easter why not celebrate with some ice cream oh he's gonna get that all over his shirt <laughs> there had a little bit of that break where the guys got to go in and use the potty there's only one bathroom working in there so it does kind of back up with the line but the guys got to use the potty and get their ice cream treats. I took Lucy for a little walk. She got to go potty, gave her some treats and some water. And then I went in and used the potty and I found these organic plantain chips with Himalayan pink salt. That just sounds lovely to munch on as we drive. I'm trying to chomp down some of my plantain chips and. A lot's actually changed in Marathon coming through there than what we remember, but welcome to Seven Mile Bridge. Pretty well-known landmark. You can walk out on it, fish. That's the old bridge. We're obviously on the new one. That is the traffic bridge. What do you think of this bridge, Teddy? This is seven miles, honey. It's a long bridge. Yeah, this is a really long, big bridge. Why does it look so deep? Um, uh, probably the water is deep there. I don't know. Anyway, I'll try to get a little bit more of going through Marathon on the way back. It was one of those moments where, wow, look at that. Like there was a new racetrack, a new Circle K, a new Starbucks. It was like a lot of different things. We were noticing uh, a spot we had visited years and years ago was pet friendly. Um, of course, it was closed today, so it wouldn't matter. But just uh, a lot of changes we were kind of taking into our brains while we were traveling by. going past the historic Pigeon Key right now. That was on my bucket list. I wanted to go out and do the tour there. Just never had the chance to. One day though, one day we'll be back. Still on Seven Mile Bridge, by the way. As you can see, there's a little cut there. On this old part of the bridge. Didn't they lose the tree? One of these hurricanes? Oh, did they? I think they did. There used to be this famous tree that was growing out on the old bridge. And for some reason, I thought it came down in one of the last couple of hurricanes or tropical storms. I can't remember though, so we'll keep an eye on it here. Teddy's very concerned on if they're gonna plant another tree. A little cut that boats can pass through. Again, I, I know the window open would be better viewing, but it would be extremely windy. So trust me, it's better that I do it this way. Hi. We are so high, aren't we? So I should kind of... What's over there? That's the old bridge, honey. Show you kind of coming down here. that's high up. Wait till we get going out west, huh, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you said old bridge and new bridge. Yeah? I was thinking the old bridge is black and the new bridge is green. It's the Chamberlain Bridge. Oh, the Chamberlain Bridge, yeah. Pelicans, funny. You think you'll still get excited about them? Yeah, I won't see them as you often You won't see now. them as much. I'll have to go over to Galveston to see them. I know there are places to see like gators and stuff in Texas too, over in East Texas. So we'll have to take little excursions around our upcoming new to us state that we're gonna live in. So we can still see some of our favorites. 
like Mark said, get on the coast to still see pelicans and stuff and get east into the swamps to still see gators. <gasps> the tree is still there, guys. So it wasn't, it was, I must have been thinking something different. I see it coming up ahead. Oh, yeah. You can't, honey. You'd have to be out on the old bridge. Getting ready to come. Neither one of us can remember exactly what this tree's name is, but it is such a famous landmark. Not that bush. This tree coming up in about two seconds, you're going to see. There it is. And it is famous. It has a name. You see it in social media pictures all the time. And yeah, for some reason I thought it had gotten ruined, but I'm glad it didn't. As you can see, I don't believe you can even go out on this section of the old bridge. This is pretty dilapidated and not fit for humans walking on or being on. So if you were to aim about that direction and go a ways by boat, you'd come to where we live in Flamingo and Everglades. little random islands like that now appearing. That was on Mark's side, sorry. It's hard to get any kind of filming on his side, so. That one has a structure on it. Yeah. You try to zoom in. It's the house I bought. Oh, you bought that, did yeah. you? Dock looks like it's still in good shape. Yeah, that must be maintained. That little pier looks like it's in good shape. Speaking of maintained, it looks like we're back with a piece of walkway fishing pier next to us now. I love, they have good humor down on the keys. Don't hurry, be happy. And we're on little duck now, little duck key. I think our overall goal is to get down and kind of do the loop through Key West while it's still fairly early. And then we'll kind of slow down a bit more plucking our way back up through. If you hold off too long in the day to get to Key West, you won't even really be able to drive through it very easily. A lot of the stuff we can stop at and stretch our legs out on the way back up through. Plus I want to stop at the Key Deer Refuge too. Maybe take oh, a little that's look. Okay, that's that sugar okay way right oh, there. Oh yeah, that's the one that has like the lodging too and everything, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I have maple seeds. I have maple seeds. <laughs> He's the maple king. He's the maple king. We have like, I don't know, 10 miles I guess. Until we're at the end of Route 1. So we'll be coming into Key West here shortly. Like I mentioned previously, I really wanted to get down here before noon, before it really got super, super busy. Not that it's not going to be busy, but then we'll kind of slow down a little bit more going back, make a few more little beach stops and leg stretches. So stay tuned. Might have to cut this into two or three parts. We're known to do that sometimes on a family day. Sometimes we don't get very much content at all. Sometimes we get quite a bit, and then I have to split it up between a few different videos. Look at the little weather satellite thingy over there, guys. Looks like a little mini Epcot mm, over to Mark's yeah. side. We're just gonna roll with the flow. We're pulling into Key West at about 11 a.m., 81 degrees, a little overcast. Beautiful. You couldn't ask for more beautiful. Just gonna see what we find. We are coming into the heart of Key West now. Able to put windows down. Ah, enjoy.
you can stay on one, take one A. Sebastian's very happy to be here at Key West. Feels very at home here. We've all decided as a family, we will come back and actually vacation in the Keys. We just got talking about it this trip too, that, you know, we thought we would do a lot more of this over the last couple of years, but Mark's schedule at Flamingo just never allowed for much family time, period. Some days, some weeks he only had one day off a week, some weeks he didn't have any days off. So yeah, it just never, things we kept putting on the back burner, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, and just never could fit it into his work schedule for almost 18 months now that he's been at Flamingo. So we do want to do so much more in Key West. We want to go out to Dry Tortugas. So yeah, as a family, we definitely will be back here for fun, for vacations, adventures, and bring you guys along with us because yeah, we, we, we never got to do Key West like it really should have been done. We never got to get familiar with the Keys the way that we really wanted to. I, I love this drive. I love driving along the water here with the palm trees. You can tell though we're getting done our dry season. They look a little yellowish and that is because we are here in Florida at the uh, end of our dry season, getting ready to go into our wetter season, our tropical season. lot of the amenities that has anything you could think of from you know good seafood restaurants to modern restaurants you're more familiar with to fast food you're familiar with there's a lot of everything here you can rent little scooters to ride around in there's trolley tours there's everything rent bikes and yeah this is actually really only our like what third maybe fourth time in Key West in the almost four years of Everglades life just never really got to do it justice. Of course it's a good place to just look at boats every boat you could ever imagine. Fishing boats, house boats. Teddy's gonna serenade y'all while we drive around Key West. Oh yes, you're going to start seeing just random rogue chickens, feral, feral chickens, feral roosters. Uh, Key West is typically very dog friendly too, very popular to have your fur baby around Key West. A lot of places have, you know, patio seating where you can sit with your fur babies. closer if I remember right to mile zero. The mile zero marker for route one. And of course the northern terminus of route one east coast here is in Mark and I's native home state of Maine. Here it is mile one. One mile. One mile. Thank you. Yeah, if you can 
What did he say? Nothing. Oh, I thought Teddy made us no, come. Us something else. Look at the bushes, guys. Those are beautiful. Um, if you can catch it like this so it's not really busy, even in your own personal car, it's nice to just drive around. Sometimes though it's too crowded and you are better to find parking somewhere or stay here and then either you know walk it or take the trolley or rent one of these other forms of transportation because it can this is nice isn't it hun right yeah, now this, this is, is quite this drivable this is pretty good. yeah this is pretty good it is not like this always Pause for the oh, it turned green. Good. There are lots of these little buggies you can rent, or people you can hire to give you tours. As you can see, see traffic does start kind of backing up. Just because that person's turning left. Oh, beautiful church. The mermaid and the alligator, that's a cute name. Winslow's bungalows. There's a lot of cute lodging, various types of lodging in Key West. And if you come kind of off season, like in the summer, you can actually get some rather decent prices sometimes. There's a lot to do here, there really is. Um, some of it quite touristy and pricey and some of it not so much. Key West First Legal Rum Distillery. Yes, I remember that's in the touristy places too, the, the first distillery of the red light here. I'm seeing that on the sign. If you were to turn right, you'd go to the Key West First Legal Rum Distillery. What I also wanted to show you is there's a lot of places like this where you can rent scooters, rent golf carts. Uh, they're everywhere. Here we go, almost to Duval Street, a famous area of Key West. About ready to hit mile zero here. Streets get narrower, more downtown you get as well. I hear the chickens. I hear chickens. We were driving around and Mark saw this really nice park, but it is no dogs so i'm gonna sit here with lucy she's like i don't understand why the guys are going and i can't go but i'm gonna sit here with lucy because once you tell teddy he can go there's no calling it back but i've never quite been to a playground where there's chickens running around that's probably why there's no dogs i don't know anyway we're gonna let teddy play for a few minutes and get his wiggles out i'm gonna research some ideas and maybe some places to go to we could do the whole swap on and off with teddy and lucy type thing Mark's out there having a conversation with a chicken. <laughs> Teddy's having a blast. That's good. It's given me a few minutes to kind of do research. So yeah, I missed the end of Route 1. I think I had to actually maybe turn it Duval Street. But that's okay. This works out. Teddy needed a little wiggle stretch anyway. But, and I needed a chance to really research. And Mark always takes any chance to talk, talk to chickens. So This, there's a lot of spots not very crowded today. This is always crowded. And you would want to see this really early. So we're going to take a cruise by. So this down here is the famous buoy that's the Southern Terminus buoy. But yeah, um, if you expect to park near it, you really want to be like really early, early, early. It is slammed. And the wait to get your picture by it is going to be really long. So we're going to just still drive by just to show you the area. We did get out and have our picture by it way back in like 
January or so of 2021. If I can dig that picture out, I might snap it in here. And if you didn't see the picture, that means I either couldn't input it easily because it was the wrong format or what. But as you can see, this is what you expect. This, uh, yeah, this is typical. There's like no parking near it. There's crowds. There's just, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a circus. And it is always this way. And especially on weekends and especially in the peak season. Yeah. As you can see, there's lines on both sides of the sidewalk. Yeah, you'd be waiting a good hour or more to just snap a quick picture. So if that is something that is ever important to you, I would do it early, early, early. But at least I got to show you the reality of it. We're actually going to go over to Fort Taylor, I think, and play for a little while. A lot of these little stands, you can buy drinks. It's nice. She's festive. She's wearing bunny ears. You really have to pack your patience. Pack your patience. Just slowly pluck your way along, which is why I said earlier, if you're really, really interested in getting out and doing it right, you really either need to be ready to bike it, be on foot, take the trolley, be renting one of those little take buggies. Take left onto United Street, then turn right onto Whitehead Street. We're going to kind of pluck our way back across to Fort Taylor. kind of show you along the way very realistic uh, what to expect visiting Key West yeah like if you're an RV person you don't want to bring your rig down here to try to do oh, all this oh yeah if you're an RV person please I'm in a compact yeah SUV and I yeah yeah this is, take the next right onto Whitehead Street yeah, It'll get better as you get away from it. It will, but if, that's just it. If you really want to see like down in all this stuff, if you're an RV person, be prepared to park somewhere and have alternative methods to get around the city here. Continue on Whitehead Street for half a mile. Thank you. Which I think that's what we had determined long ago after our first couple of visits, is if we were really going to see everything, especially with a young kid, we'd have to, you know, and that was before we had a dog involved, we'd have to really stay down here and like take turns going out to see stuff and film stuff and you'd have to really just kind of stay here for a couple of nights and really immerse yourself in it. It's just really a lot to try to come down and do in one little day. Hey, you can see the lighthouse. There's people up in the top of the lighthouse. I don't know if you caught that on film, guys. If you look up into the left corner of my screen, see there's people up at that lighthouse. That's really cool. Now we're south on US Route 1 again. See, so yeah, I think we did make a mistake and I think we were supposed to have turned. <laughs> this way like before but hey it worked out Teddy got a good little leg stretch yeah it's just uh, that's yeah Hemingway's place that's what that line is for Mark was asking what that line was for and that's Hemingway's place again supposed to be really popular really well worth it but same thing we've never been in a position to be able to stop and get out and wait in line oh look at the Easter Bunny stuff on the house Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Sorry if I made you guys dizzy. Look, step out. Yeah, see, we had went straight back at that intersection when if we wanted to stay on Route 1, we should have turned, and I didn't quite realize that. Still hear chickens. There, it does smell good. Feet, turn left onto South 3rd Street. It's so cute cute too to constantly just we didn't know what to think when we first came so we never did a lot of studying on Key West before and our first trip down here we're like why is there chickens everywhere we had no idea of the history or significance or any part of that 
I still don't know my Key West South history Street. the way I should, but anyway, we are going to come down here and turn to head to Fort Zachary Taylor, which is in our Florida State Park system. And just a note, down here in Monroe County State Parks, even if you have a state park pass, you have to pay an extra fee, usually for the Monroe County tax. There goes a little trolley. That's the green parrot bar, Mark says. Smells good. The first and last bar on US Route 1, because we're right at the southern end here. a minute and take it all in. Mark's right. That green parrot smells mm. phenomenal. Oh. Give you guys a gist of what to expect. There's a scooter rental place over there. In 1,000 feet at the traffic circle, take the second exit onto Butler Boulevard. What is a traffic circle? So it wants you to take the second exit. That doesn't look like... Is that the end? I'm not sure. Is that the entrance? That's an annex. Yeah. <laughs> At the traffic circle, take the second exit onto Butler Boulevard. Groundhog Day! No. <laughs> we, for some reason, we just looked at that annex and we're like, I don't know if you're supposed to pull into that. So Mark turned left and we ended up having to go around the block because, yeah, evidently this is how you go into it. So we're going to kind of trust. That's the way the signs say. It's the way the GPS says. So here we go. The Truman Annex. like it though didn't it <laughs> like yeah. what was that yeah see now you're down here to the waterfront park which then you're going to go through another little uh roundabout <laughs> i hope sometimes you guys are picking up those chickens in my audio i don't think you probably are but all right, let's try this. Now you're gonna go through the roundabout and you're gonna take like, yeah, you're gonna go all the way around it, I guess. Oh, wow, the nice Coast Guard ship out here, guys. Teddy, look at the big Coast Guard in ship. In a quarter mile, keep right. They want you to be in the right. Or, Fort Zachary Taylor, we're still going in the right direction. Yeah, it is good. It is good. It is a good place to walk your dog, honey. Walk my dog. <laughs> we just gotta be patient and get up here to the stop sign. But yeah, I like that Mark is nice and lets people cross. Oh, the line to get in is backed up. This might not be a good sign. 